Unit One: The History of Opera. Stage entertainment comes in many forms. Ballets, musicals, plays, concerts, and operas are the main types. First, I'd like to talk about opera, specifically its history. Opera is basically a play with singing instead of speaking. Why and how did it develop? Well, we must go all the way back to ancient Greece to get to opera's roots. In Greek drama, the chorus was an important part of plays. Yet no one knew if the chorus spoke or sang its lines. In the late 1600s, Italian composer Jacopo Peri and others concluded that the chorus sang. They also believed that the entire Greek drama was sung. So Peri decided to make his own drama in which all the parts were sung. It was called Daphne. It's considered the first opera. Oh yes, spell it: D A F N E. From that beginning, opera spread through Europe and eventually the world. The most famous countries for opera were Italy, Germany, Russia, England, and France. By the 18th century, two distinct forms of opera had emerged: opera seria and opera buffa. Opera seria was an extremely dramatic performance of a serious nature. Originating in Italy, it was enjoyed by the nobility and upper classes. Opera buffa, though, was similar to what we'd call comedy today. It was written for the middle classes. Its roots came from opera seria, which often had a comic subplot. Also, in the 1700s, the idea of an opera season began. This was a time during the year when many operas were performed in one location. Today, the most famous opera season takes place in the German town of Beirut. The composer Richard Wagner's works are the focus of its opera season. Now back to opera seria. It had some weaknesses. Here's one: the story was deemed less important than the、uh, music and singing. But in the late 18th century, Christoph Gluck began a reform movement. He stated that the dramatic storyline was opera's most important element. His thoughts on opera have been influential up to this day. The following is a case in point: Great composers like Mozart and Richard Wagner followed his lead. Mozart is more famous for his comedies than his dramatic operas. Alternatively, Wagner's works are heavy on drama. They are long and intricate with very serious tones. In fact, Wagner is often said to be the master of opera. Opera is popular with many these days, but with so many entertainment choices out there, it isn't very profitable. Most operas are kept alive by donations and public funds. This has led to the downsizing of opera scores. Thus, many modern works are written for small orchestras or are one-act compositions. Listening comprehension. Number one. What is the topic of the lecture? Number two. According to the professor. What is true about operas written in modern times? Number three. According to the professor, what are the influences of the following on opera? Number four. What does the professor imply about Richard Wagner? Number five. The following statements describe the two different types of operas. Put a check in the correct box for each sentence.